So questions from the homework from lesson five. Uh, lesson seven, first thing I would have checked is, hey, is there anywhere where they told me two things or total current? No, no. I'm going to have to rewrite this as one single solitary resistor. Okay. Um, I said uh, this here, by the way, this is probably uh, tougher than would be considered fair game. Just letting you know. Or if this did make it onto a provincial, it would be like a multiple choice, the nasty one that year. I look for any that are in series first. These two are in series. This is a 12 ohm resistor. Is that okay? I'm going to combine these two because they're in parallel. I'm going to say 1 over R parallel equals 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. 1 over 6 plus 1 over 12. Take the result of 4. Okay. So if I temporarily re redraw this, number 7, I have a battery. I have a 10 ohm. I have a 5 ohm. I have a 2 ohm. I have a 2 ohm, there and there, but this whole monstrosity here is the same as a single 4 ohm resistor. Is that okay so far, Sally? And what I like is, can you see these three are in series now? 2 plus 4 plus 2. You know what I can replace this with? A single solitary 8 ohm resistor. Here's the advantage of doing this on the tablet. I can go... Yep. And it's way easier to do my scratch diagram. 8 ohm resistor. Oh, and you know what? I might not even need to do all this because I didn't read the question, Sally. I didn't even notice it says 3 amps goes through the 6 ohm. How many amps goes through here? 3. How many volts goes through here? 18. You know what? I don't think I need to redraw all this. That was silly of me because this is one single 12 ohm resistor. Okay. Can I start here and end up here going through this or both of these? These together have to lose 12 volts. These together have to lose 12 volts. And these together are a single 12 ohm resistor. What's the current flowing through this resistor then? Louder, you're right. One amp, which means if I got three amps and I got one amp, how many amps are going through this two ohm resistor? 18? What's 18? Oh, the eight. I'm sorry. Not 12 volts. Good gosh, Mr. Duick. Thank you. 18 volts. I'm tempted to restart the video lesson and change it, but I'll leave that in because I make mistakes just like you guys do. And I learn from them just like you guys do. Usually my mistakes are of the dumb variety, which is why I've told you it's the toughest stage to get out of is not tripping on our brain. Sorry, 18 volts, 12 ohms. How many amps are flowing through this little branch here? 1.5? Okay, 1.5 amps. And what that means is I got 3 amps going here. I got 1.5 amps going here. When they join together, how many amps are flowing through this resistor? 4.5. You with me so far, kiddo? Oh, and you know what? How many amps are flowing through this resistor? If they break up into 3 and 1.5, it's got to be 4.5 amps flowing through there, too. <coughs> oh, which means I know the voltage in both of these as well. If I go I times R, you know what the voltage drop is? How's that help? Well, look, 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 look. If we start here and end here, if we go through these three hills, how many volts do we lose? Is it 36? That must mean if I go through this one hill, I also better lose 36 because we're leaving and meeting together. The skiers can go this way or this way. This has to be 36 volts. Ooh which tells me what the current is in this particular resistor. 
36 divided by 5, uh, 7.2. Ooh, ooh, which, look, 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 7.2 amps going this way and 4.5 amps going this way. What's the current when they all join together? 11.6. So I think there's 11.6 amps flowing through this overall circuit. Oh, 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 now I know the uh, voltage drop here, too. If you go I times R, 11.7 amps, not 11.6. That makes more sense to me as going, I'm getting a 2. And a seven. I'm getting a two and a five. Seven. Eleven point seven. Or you could just talk louder. Anyways, that's okay. Sally, in a nice loud voice, what's the voltage drop through here? Hundred and seventeen. So you know what? This was all a big waste of time because I didn't read the stupid question. My fault. Start at the battery. How high is this battery? I don't know. Let's walk through a ski run. There's one ski run that gets me to the bottom of the battery. How many volts do I lose going through here? 117. How many volts do I lose going through here? 36. How high must the chairlift be if I'm losing 117 and 136? It's got to be 153 volts. Does that make sense? After I thoroughly botched that explanation, but hopefully I recovered at the end there. <coughs> this is why that whole, if you know two, you know three thing, it, that also helps the diagrams fall apart. Because then you can start hopscotching your way along and along and along and along and along. Is that all right? Any others? We're good? So today is more of the same, except we're going to, at one point, also ask, hey, what if you got more than one battery, like most of your electronic devices? So lesson six, voltage difference. Let's talk about how your electronic devices work. <coughs> if you look at most electronic devices, for example, those of you that have a graphing calculator, take the battery case off right now and take a quick peek. Are your batteries in series or in parallel? Are your batteries in series or in parallel in your graphing calculators? They're in parallel. They're in parallel. In series is when you have the batteries touching end to end. We're going to talk about what the difference is. They both have their advantages and they both have their disadvantages. So if we were to connect two 1.5 volt cells in series, what would be the net voltage as recorded by the voltmeter? Well, let's go back to our ski hill analogy. If you go up a 1.5 volt high chairlift and then you get off it and you go on another 1.5 volt high chairlift, what's your net voltage? Three. 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 Explain your answer using principles of physics. <coughs> Excuse me. Explain your answer using principles of physics. Well, um, it just makes sense. My chairlift analogy. I'm not going to give you a big fancy explanation. Now, here's what I do want you to notice. What's my overall resistance in this circuit? What does it say? 10 ohms. With 3 volts, what's my current? You don't need to go to a calculator to go 3 divided by 10. Please, God, you don't need to. What's my current exactly to one decimal place, please? Okay, 0. 0.3 amps. What if it had been 1.5 volts? What if it had been 1.5 volts there? How many amps would it be? Okay, the advantage with series is you step up the voltage. The disadvantage is you drain the batteries twice as fast, twice the current. And current is electronic skiers. You drain the batteries twice as fast. But it's a way for you in a small electronic device, Dylan, to get a much, much higher voltage. So what's an electronic device that's almost always in series? A flashlight, right? Put the batteries in a flashlight. They're always touching end to end, are they not? So what you're doing there is you're stepping up the voltage. You're getting a bigger current, getting a brighter bulb. 
uh, draining the battery way faster, way faster. The advantage with parallel is you split the current, say, in your graphing calculators four ways. You don't get as high a voltage, but your graphing calculators don't need a high voltage. But those batteries last a long time. I've got one at home that I haven't put the batteries in for four years. I don't use it all that often. I use it when I'm marking. But it's been going pretty good. So, in many portable appliances, CD players is another one. Portable CD players, who have, yeah, okay, fine, these were typed about seven years ago, fair enough. Uh, but flashlights, which are still around, I hope, for the most part, um, two or four batteries are used in series, as in the diagram above. In series, the effect increases the total voltage. The problem is that each cell now has twice or four times as much current flowing through it as it would otherwise. It dramatically decreases the length of of the, of the battery lasting, the life of the, the battery. What would the effect be of connecting the cells in parallel? Well, what we're really saying is some skiers can go this way, some skiers can go this way, but how high are they when they get to the top of the chair lifts? 1.5. Here, you don't increase the voltage. What you do is, because really, and now my ski hill analogy breaks down. The source of the skiers is the chairlift. You're splitting the source of the skiers up. That means the chairlifts will last twice as long. Now, here's a question. How could I figure out the net overall voltage? Well, I would actually put my voltmeter... right there because that voltage has to match that one and it has to match that one because skiers can go through this this path and end up back where they started from and they can go through this path and end up back where they started from <clears throat> so this would be odd to measure the voltage across the battery you could actually measure it across the resistance nowhere near the battery Then we have the idea of a rechargeable battery. A rechargeable battery is charged by connecting them to a cell that forces current back through the cell. If we connect a 1.5 volt battery to a 6 volt charger, then what would be the direction of the current and what would be the net voltage? What do you think would make sense if you have 6 volts going this way and 1.5 volts going that way, what do you think the net voltage would read? 4.5. I guess in my ski hill analogy, what we're really saying is they go up this chairlift, but this chairlift is taking people down the mountain a little ways. And the stronger cell would force the current in the stronger direction. So the current would be this way. We have to have a protective resistor because we don't want to have a short circuit. Current would be counterclockwise. And the net voltage would be 4.5 volts. <coughs> so if the net voltage would be 4.5 volts, and the net resistance is 10 ohms, what's the current flowing through this? You could calculate it, right? Four, I think point, point 0.45 or 4.45? Point, point, point four point 0.45 amps. What if you didn't have that resistor there? You'd have a current approaching infinite. It would get very hot. It would be a short circuit. Not good. Things would melt. So you put a small protective resistor there. You don't want to put a big resistor because then this would heat up and you're not using the energy to charge the battery up. You're going to take longer to charge the battery up. But this is how a battery recharger works. Now you have to have a chemical inside your rechargeable battery that is capable of having the chemical reaction reversed to set it back to normal. So you can't just stick any battery into a rechargeable. I don't think anything. Or it might get warm. Okay, there you go. 
you're sending a current through, but because the current that's going through here isn't doing any work, all that's happening is the energy is going to go somewhere, heat. In terms of our ski hill analogy, cells in series are like two chairlifts. Cells in parallel, like example two, turn the page, are like two chairlift, chairlifts, both of which lead to the top of the mountain. Megan, you go up that chairlift, I'll go up this chairlift. They're both going to end us off at the same spot. Opposite cells are like one up chairlift followed by one down chairlift. And so by properly labeling the circuit, we can easily find the difference in voltage at various points. Principles to keep in mind, positive means higher, negative means lower. And current flows downhill from positive to negative. Positive to negative when you're going through a resistance means you're losing voltage. Negative to positive when you're going through a resistance means you're gaining voltage. And I have a lovely Foxtrot comic there. You can read it yourself. Let's look at example four. <coughs> example four says, find the voltage difference between points A and D. And then it's going to say graph the voltage on the grid provided. I think we're going to pass on the graph. We're just going to find the voltage difference. So the first thing I want to f check is, did they tell me total current? Look at your, they did? Oh, then this is probably going to fall apart. Did they tell me total voltage? Do I know all of the chair lift or lifts? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, Ryan, how many amps are going through this resistor? Careful. 0.7. How about here? 0.7. How about here? 0.7. Oh, I know two, I know four. I'm really interested in voltage though. How many volts are going through this resistor? I times R. Oh, we're losing seven volts going through that resistor. So what would the voltage measure right here? 38. How many? Yeah. Sorry? Oh, 0.7 volts. I times R. Let's try that again. Thank you. 0.7 volts. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Good gosh, Mr. Duick. Thank you, Gord. So uh, actually, it would measure uh, 44.3 right there. How many volts do I lose going through this one? 4 times 7 is 28. Uh, is it 28? 28? So if I'm starting out 45 volts high, how many volts must I lose going through here if that's my last chance to lose the voltage and get back to the bottom? Sorry? 16.3? How big is R? point. <coughs> 23.3 okay. says graph the voltage on the grid provided it's nerdily cool but I'm not that interested in the graph right now so I'm gonna skip it and example 5 says in the previous example what is the resistor R we figured that out already we said it was 23.3 Let's go to example six. Okay. Here's a nastier one. Two batteries. Which battery is bigger? Six. I'm pretty sure it's the winning current. So where it says current direction, current is going that way. Right here, current is moving to the right. Right here, current is moving to the right. Now, this 4 volt is also pushing current up, but this 0.5 amps, is it going to be moving to the left? No, no, because this is the winning battery. The current is moving to the right. <coughs> the current is moving downhill. The current is moving to the left. 
Now, some current must be going up because we have 0.5 amps up, but I'm also positive that some of the current heads that way. Jordan, you see how we've kind of reasoned our way towards it? By the way, this is way tougher than you get on the provincial. So if you follow all that now, did they tell me total current anywhere? Nope. Um, did they tell me anywhere with two things? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's see what we got here. What's the current in this 3 ohm resistor? Got to be 0.5. What's the voltage drop in this 3 ohm resistor? One point five, is that right? So we lose one point five volts. We gain four volts. <coughs> Excuse me, as I cough here. So if we're four volts and I go through this resistor and I go through here losing one point five, and that gets me to the bottom of the chairlift. Let me draw that path just so you can see. If I follow that path, 4 high, lose 1.5. How many must I lose over here? 2.5? Cool. How does that help me? Well, if I walk this ski hill, I can also get to ground level, can I not? How many volts did I lose in this resistor? 2.5. How many had I better lose, because this is the only other ski hill we ski down, how many must I lose over here? Got to be 3.5 volts. I have to lose. 3.5 volts. Oh, do I know two? I know three. How many amps must be going through this section of the circuit? One amp. Hey, let's follow it. Let's follow it. I got one amp here. I got 0.5 amps here. Okay, the current direction is going this way. You know how many amps are going through this resistor? 1.5. Do I know two? I know three. What's this resistor? Point six repeating, yeah, one point six seven ohms. Let's see. I know all three here. I know all three here. I know all three here. Oh, I think I, I found everything they wanted me to find. Did did I not? It says find the unknown currents and voltages using Kirchhoff's laws. I think we did. Oh, and then it says, note, the complete analysis of this two-cell and parallel circuit is beyond the level of physics 12, but the voltage and currents we can certainly handle. Extra batteries. <coughs> Excuse me. Homework. Number one. Number two, sure. Three is good. Sure, four is good. Pretty quick, actually. Okay. Five is nice, so ask yourself... What happens to the voltage in this 5 ohm resistor when we close the switch? These are the kind of using principles of physics right to explain questions. And especially they love stuff like number 6 where they say if every bulb is identical, what happens to the brightness of the bulbs? Now here's what I would do to solve number 6. You can do it algebraically. You can do it uh, Kirchhoff's Laws nerdly. Or probably what I would do since they're all identical bulbs, I would make them all a nice resistance. Maybe 10? Actually, probably two. 
make that two, make that two, make that two. You know the voltage. You should be able to find the total current. You should actually be able to solve this whole circuit and then go VI, VI, VI. Because remember, when they say brightness, what they really mean, Sally, is power. Seven. Sure, eight is good. Nine. Have I given so far one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Okay. Sure, ten and eleven. <coughs> I think I assigned all of them. Sorry, I hadn't looked at them for a while. Those are all pretty good. 